All right, welcome back to another episode of the Carter Cast. I'm your host, Carter Ball, and with me as always, Dylan, Ben, Connor, AFC West. That's why you clicked on the episode. Uh, are, Dylan, are the Chiefs going to be bad this season? Are the Chiefs going to have a losing record? That's what you were saying off the air. I, I was actually pushing for 4-13. and 13. <laughs> The Wilkerson ratings, I mean, they are. They're, Alex they're, Smith. They're here this year. It's tough when you don't have Alex Smith. Yeah. Ch- oh, Chad no. Henney's a big blow for them. Anyhow, before yeah. we get into today's show, we're brought to you by SeatGeek. Download the SeatGeek app or go to SeatGeek.com. Use code CARTERCAST. $20 off your first purchase. $50 minimum purchase required. Terms and conditions apply. Use code CARTERCAST at SeatGeek.com today. Let's get into it. Let's start off with the Chiefs. They're not, they're not going 4-13. and 13. They're not going to be bad. They're going to be the best team. This is so similar to how the Patriots were for years in the AFC East where – the division is so boring to preview. The division's so boring to talk about because you know it's the Patriots. And then people like to do these cute things and say, ooh, hey, the Chargers, they can win. Oh, hey, the Jets are kind of good this year. The Dolphins are kind of good. It's the Chiefs division. The Chiefs are winning this division. Spoiler alert. We're not spoiling anything. Their win total is 11.5. They've made eight straight playoffs. Patrick Mahomes the best quarterback in football. The whole question is, are they going to three-peat Dylan? Um... I, th- it's hard to say they're not going to. Just looking at everything, and th- th- what's amazing about the Chiefs is, well, first of all, I was doing this preview. Kind of crazy to imagine that Tyree Kill was paired up with Patrick Mahomes at one point. That's kind of insane to think about. But uh, I mean, at some point, you just chalk it up to Mahomes and Reed. And I think at this point, they have deserved that. Uh, you have Hollywood Brown, the acquisition of Hollywood Brown. A question in the air, dislocated shoulder, is he going to be ready? Rasheed Rice obviously was great last year. Xavier Worthy drafted. Uh, and then, like I said, Hollywood Brown. I think the only real question we have to address is last year the run defense wasn't great, but at the same time, when you're as good as the Chiefs, you can kind of just, hey, we're not going to be great stopping the run. Beat us everywhere else. Like, that's kind of where we're at with the Chiefs. Um, schedule to start the year. Kind of tough, and I'll get. We'll we'll talk about division winners. I have a little tidbit there, but in terms of the tougher games they have, they go to San Francisco, go to Buffalo, going to Cleveland won't be easy, and then they're home. They, Baltimore on Thursday night football to open the year. So, uh, yeah, I like the Chiefs. I don't know if there's much more I can add to that. They're they're going to be great again. The the craziest part is they're the same team, and then you add. You're like, oh, they're receivers. I don't love their receivers last season. They were they were not great. Okay, we add Hollywood Brown and Xavier Worthy and yeah. Rasheed Rice, and we have Travis Kelsey. This team's going to be phenomenal. Connor. Let's not – okay, yes, but Hollywood Brown's hurt. Rasheed Rice, legal trouble. Let's not forget that. Even, they're, if, they're, he's, even he, if he suspended four, five, six games, I don't think it matters. Xavier Worthy would probably be awesome, but never played a snap. Travis Kelsey looked a step slower last year in the regular season, at least. I think we'll see a lot more load managing from him. First year under 1,000 yards since 2015. Like, this, as far as the regular season goes, I think there's a real shot they go under 11.5 and, and then still win the Super Bowl. If they go 11-6 and six oh, and sure. win the Super Bowl, I'm not batting an eye. So, like, if we're talking about this team from a regular season standpoint, I think there's going to be a couple games where it's either really close against a bad team or they drop one or two where you're like, Oh my God, like what happened there? Is Mahomes sick again? And then when the playoffs come, they're going to dominate everybody again. Like it, yeah. it, they, they didn't lose any pieces that are key enough to make me think they won't make another run. Yeah, and, that, and that's the thing too where you mentioned the Chiefs do get bored in the regular season like those great <laughs> Golden State teams where they're just screwing around in the regular season. That Mahomes behind the back pass is going to happen sometime in the regular season. It's oh, going to be yeah. awesome. And I'm going to jump out of my seat because – He's the coolest quarterback to watch I've ever seen. But but with the Chiefs, too, look, 11-6, and six, the issue is the division got worse. The division got yes. worse this year. They're, I mean, I would honestly be shocked if they were worse than 5-1 and one in division games. They're going to drop one. It's very, 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 very hard to go undefeated in division games. Five, anything less than 5-1, and one, I'd be shocked, to be honest. So, Ben, thoughts on the Chiefs? Um... I learned this weekend that Carson Wentz is their backup quarterback. Mm. And that's not a bad thing. Not as good as the Patriots depth though, one through four at the quarterback nope, position. I, was, I wasn't I, I wasn't saying it I wasn't saying it as a good or bad thing. It was just a thing. <laughs> <laughs> like I don't know. There's just not much to be said. I don't think it's like it's certainly not a shoe in that they are gonna three peat. Like I don't think they're on this It's just hard because I think what it, I, I'm going to sound stupid, but, like, last year, like, 
I was watching them win the Super Bowl. I'm like, but they're they're not that good. They're not that good. Like that's what I was saying to myself. But I'm like, but it's the Chiefs, right? Uh, like, I was just like, they they weren't better than the Ravens. They weren't better than the 49ers. Like, they weren't. How did but, this happen? But they've but done that's this, just what happens. But they've done this thing where in the NBA you coast a little bit in the regular season, and now they have that ability with the chemistry and the years together and a great coach and great turn quarterback. Turn it on. They can turn it on in the playoffs. They can hit that next level. And we've seen that time and time again where I'm not going to freak out if they're 500 or they're 3-3 three mm-hmm. three for some reason in this season. I'm just never going to panic with the Chiefs. I'll never hit the panic button unless Mahomes is hurt. That's it. And this sounds dumb, but they can lose in the playoffs. Like, they're not, like, on some level that I think – other of the NFL elites can't beat them. Sure, they can. You I don't can know. Win. Like that. That sounds Sports. dumb. Like that's obvious. It's obvious, but it's like the Chiefs are kind of like obviously they have the best quarterback in the NFL easily, but like they're kind of in a group of like, you know, five-ish really good teams that can win a Super Bowl, mm-hmm. and a lot of the time they do. But they could also one of those teams. Could beat them. Like, they could catch the the Chiefs kind of screwing around a little bit, getting a little too cute, and beat them. But, that, do, they think awesome. cute, but do they get too cute in the playoffs, though? No, they don't. That's the thing. They I thought they did the against Burrow. Season. But Burrow's the only one who can beat them. Burrow's the only guy. Have you seen Patrick Mahomes beat Jared Goff? <laughs> he literally that's has not. But that's that would mean the Lions Bowl. have to advance. Yeah. Like, have we, have Ooh, we seen true. Jared Goff win a Super Bowl? We saw what he looked like in a Super Bowl. No, no Jared, Jared Goff, he will be Eli Manning to Tom Brady, Jared Goff to, to Patrick Mahomes. <laughs> that's, what, think, that's, that's, that's what I'm wanting. I think this Chiefs team, I think this is the most simple analysis I'll probably give out of all the previews. It really hinges on the wide receiver room. They were second in the league in drop percentage last year. If they just improve to an average level, if Xavier Worthy, Hollywood Brown, improve sorry I froze for a second improves like an average level I think that's all they need I, I really do like Mahomes is the guy he's gonna he's he's the ultimate consistency at quarterback receivers they're a little better Kelsey will be fine defense will be fine again it was the best defense with Mahomes era by far last year they lose Willie Gay they lose Denarius Steed yes those are tough losses but if everything else is just better a baseline average if the receivers don't drop everything this team should be fine period yeah, it and, just hinges on that high and, ceiling low floor for the receiver room though but also, I don't think it could get lower than last season. Well, that's, what, well, that's the thing. Like, yeah. I don't think there's anywhere to go but up for that receiver. Exa- room. And plus, I think with these additions of Hollywood and Xavier Worthy and whatnot, this is going to open up the field for Travis Kelsey more. Travis Kelsey, yeah. because before last season and the regular season, it was Travis Kelsey was getting targeted in every single regular yep. season game. It was, okay, we got to stop him. We got to stop him. Another weird point that we never talk about in sports is whenever a team has these crazy distractions during the season where oh the, you know off the field stuff is going on left and right oh that's going to affect them in the playoffs and it usually does because most teams just don't win titles and most teams don't end up winning the title every single year the Chiefs still won with the craziest storyline in NFL in the NFL last season every single week I mean we were doing crap on Taylor Swift last so season. much fun so every much fun. single every single outlet they were the biggest it was all the talk was this Taylor Swift bull crap t- Taylor Swift that it wasn't a distraction at all it didn't matter they still won yeah. that's th- this Chiefs team yeah. they and I I I f- will do Super Bowl predictions on another episode but the more we talk about this Mahomes deep options this year are so much better than last year you had Valdez Scantling who was inconsistent and Justin Watson as your second best deep threat and now it's like, all right, Xavier Worthy, who runs a 4-2 or something like that. Hollywood Brown, deep threat. Rasheed Rice uh, over the middle, and then Kelsey's the safety valve. Those weapons are better, probably the best he's had since Tyreek left. And also yeah. last season when you watch the Chiefs, you're like, oh, Mahomes is doing a lot of dinking and dunking. You know, these little underneath <laughs> plays, little shovel passes. It was a lot of short throws. You, you didn't see a lot of super long, deep throws. They were stopping that. This season, that's going to open up more, regardless I if they're so, better too. or not. He is going to throw the ball deeper to these receivers. But I think that's enough on the Chiefs. I don't think there's much more to add. Let's go on to the Chargers. Chargers win totals 8.5. Dylan, who's got it better than us? Nobody. <laughs> you don't lie. You don't cheat. You don't steal. That is what I've raised my family on, and those are the values that I live my life on. 
What about if you are leaving a school in horrible circumstances because of something you created? Well, first of all, a lot of things to unpack there. Uh, Jim doesn't. <laughs> Jim didn't know anything about it. I think that's first and foremost to unpack. That's probably the only thing we need to touch on. Right? Okay, there I, you go. You did. I think. I think we should focus on the fact that uh, allegedly Jim might have an extremely competitive spirit, and this could be an advantage for the Chargers. He'll do anything to win. We should take he'll that do any, from it. He'll do anything to win, other than lie, cheat, and steal, obviously. Well, of course. That's what, yeah. he, that's what he said at the press conference. Himself. Maybe tell other people to, but not himself. Well, um, the Chargers. Uh, big fan <laughs> of the Chargers this year. Well, let's just change the subject. Um, I've always been kind of... I I didn't like Staley. Always cautious of a Staley defense. He was insistent last year. Of course, that yeah, Staley he was, decision. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. He he was. Uh, I like the offense. I I always like the Chargers' offense. I think Justin Herbert's a great quarterback. We look at the additions for this year. Gus Edwards doesn't get me really excited for the Chargers. I. We'll see when we talk about this running back room, especially like Edwards, Dobbins, just like have never stayed healthy. So you don't really know what to expect there. Um, Christian Fulton, Hayden Hurst, Denzel Perryman. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We lose, they lose Mike Williams, Keenan Allen, Austin Eckler. List goes on and on. Uh, we talked about rebuild. I don't, I don't know if we can say this is exactly a rebuild, but I think Harbaugh's starting to do what Harbaugh wants to do. He's building his own team here. Uh, you have Disley, who's a great blocking tight end. Not really a great receiver, but a great pass blocker. Uh, you have the offensive line here. Wasn't It was kind of average last year. Uh, we got Bozeman from Carolina, I believe, who's a downgrade from Nick Clapp. Um, you get Joe Jesse Alt. Minner in. Joe Alt, great draft. I wish the Titans would have drafted him. I was so mad at Jim for that. But uh, defensively, you bring in Jesse Minner, defensive coordinator, guy he had at Michigan. Uh, I think that's a huge addition. This defense will not be as bad as it was under Staley, and I think that's there's a lot to say about that. Uh, Herbert, with his plantar fascia injury, I've had that injury. It's no joke. I, I, prayers up to Athlete. Justin Herbert. Yeah, not fun. Golfing, right? Um, I think that's a lingering injury. I don't know if it's – he's been practicing. Is he going to be 100%? I hope so. But I like the Chargers this year, I, uh, and I could be biased because of Jim Harbaugh. Uh, big question on offense for me is just the running back room. Well, what about the receivers? The receivers is a massive question mark. Who we got? Josh, Josh Palmer. Palmer. I, I do Johnson? think Josh Palmer. I think Josh Palmer has a breakout year. I will say that. But Lad behind him, yeah, Lad McConkey. Lad McConkey. We've all three of us on this podcast have had the DJ Chark experience. That's yeah. true. I, I did write DJ Chark <laughs> down here. That's true. I, you know, Lad McConkey. He, I mean, he was good at Georgia. I, there's upside there. Couldn't um, stay healthy. That's true. Couldn't stay healthy. I, I guess you could chalk that up too. Receiver room not that great, but uh, the defense is going to be a step up. It's going to be unlike a Chargers team that we've seen in the past, and not not bad of a schedule at all either. So, I'll piggyback off that. My gut reaction to this Chargers team is I feel refreshed. I think that combination of Staley and Keenan Allen and Mike Williams and Austin Eckler, clearly those weapons are more talented than what they have on the roster this year, but I think that combination had hit their ceiling. We knew what to expect from them. It was like, all right, they're exciting, but, man, they're always injured. Man, they're never on the field at the same time. This isn't clicking. Like, you look at the preview every year for the last three years, and you're like, yeah, there's talent there. They could be good, but there's never a threat of them to be in the playoffs. Now, under Harbaugh, brand new identity. You, are, you already see it taking shape. Dylan touched on it. Will Disley, one of the best blocking tight ends. There's only one reason they signed him, and that's because they want to run the football more. Gus Edwards, J.K. Dobbins, the, basically the Baltimore Ravens running back room this year. I don't feel awesome about that, but I think it's a step in the right direction. I think there's going to be a good, if they can stay healthy, that's a pretty good rotation. Weapon wise, I think it's a little skim. I think Josh Palmer will have a good year this year. After him, there's a lot of question marks. But because of Harbaugh's identity on offense, I think Justin Herbert will be asked to do less and therefore will do more, if that makes sense. There's yeah. not going to be pressure on him every single down. He's not going to be throwing the ball 45 times a game. Hey, Justin Herbert, it's third and 11. Please chuck the ball down the field and get us a first down. I think there's going to be much more of an identity and balance to their offense. And like Dylan said, defensively, they're going to be better. Khalil Mack, Joey Bosa on the edge, 
this is not a bad defense. Derwin James still back there, lost both their starting linebackers. But overall, I feel better about this defense than I usually do about a Chargers defense. So I'm in. I'm in on them. As a Michigan rider last year with Harbaugh, I'm in on the new identity <laughs> for the Chargers. I, I'll pick, I'll go off that. I, Braden Staley was the uh, – I couldn't believe he kept his job as long as he did. It was crazy. Oh, yeah. It, it, every week it's like, wait, is he he's, – he's still coaching? You watch a Chargers game, you're like, I thought he was fired four weeks ago. Every single game. The upgrade to Harbaugh can't be understated. We've seen Harbaugh be successful in the NFL. That's not a question mark. And we've seen him be successful at every program he's been at very quickly, whether it's in college, whether it's hmm. Stanford, Michigan, or the 49ers. He's very successful very quickly. I think if there's any other coach that comes into this situation, I think their win total could be as low as six and a half. I think Harbaugh has bumped them up two wins on a Vegas win total. I really do. And I also think the division's not great, but I think Harbaugh alone adds two wins to their win total. I really, 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 really believe in Harbaugh. I do. I think this is going to be a tough year. I think Harbaugh's going to vet out who he wants, who he's going to go with going in the future. And you mentioned the Justin Herbert injury. I kind of wouldn't hate for him to sit out quite a bit of this year and may a li- not tank, but maybe tank a little bit, get a great draft pick, build up that offensive line, get the weapons in there, build up that defense. And I think the Chargers are a legit year away from competing in the AFC West. I really do. But this division's but, so bad, Carter. How are they not going to compete this year? Like, how are they not going to be better than the other two teams in the division? They are. They are going to be better than mm-hmm. those other two teams. I, I, I still believe that. And I believe they're going to be better than those other two teams. But... They're so far away from the top of this division. They're yeah. so far away. Yeah. Well, and, well, yeah. But and so with how bad those other two teams are, you're looking at nine and eight. Maybe more. There, there's some That's winnable games on that schedule. Like their schedule's I, not hard at all. No, and I, I do not doubt they will steal one against Kansas City. That just seems like the perfect game where it's yeah. like. Oh my God! Has Kansas City lost a step? What happened to Mahomes? Like, look at Harbaugh, and they beat him like fourteen to ten or something. Yeah, and that's the other yeah. thing about the difference between Staley and Harbaugh. Staley just was stupid decisions, were mind-numbing decisions, too much gambling at the wrong times on the football field. Harbaugh is going to play disciplined football. You know what you're going to get. It's not going to. Be, it, he knows what he's going to do. There, there's no question mark going into a game for Harbaugh. Ben, thoughts on the Chargers? I think just to piggyback off of, like, crapping on Brandon Staley, um, I think what I hated about him wasn't the the willingness to gamble. It was then things weren't going well and people made fun of him for gambling. So he's like, oh, okay, I'll stop. Yeah. (laughs) Okay, what? You got to double down. You got to double down. Like, at least, like, Dan Campbell, it's like, you're like, someone can come out and be like, Dan, like, to Dan Campbell, that is the stupidest thing you've ever done. He's like... Well, I'm going to do it again. Beer. Yeah, hold my beer. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm going to do it again. And it works most of the time. Brandon Staley, it felt like he didn't know what kind of head coach he wanted to be. Um, along with the fact that he was supposed to be this guy where it's like, okay, you give him the defense and it's good. You give him a talented defense and it was awful. It's just an all-around terrible coach. Um, and I, I believe in the like getting some instant gratification from having Herbert – Harbaugh, and then a new defensive coordinator, a mentor. And then I like Greg Roman, I think, like, he's not, like, the best OC in the like, but he's, he's pretty good. That's fine. He's had experience. I think this is a team that wins, like, nine or ten games. I just, it truly, like, I know you look at it and see question marks in places, but I'm like, I like the defensive coordinator with some defensive talent that they have. I like the head coach. I like the quarterback. That's enough in this division to get me to – nine or ten wins especially because i think they win they steal one against the chiefs and i think they go three and one against the broncos and raiders they'll That's beat the bad teams in the division they will beat the, yeah. they will win the game yeah. they're supposed to win under yeah. Harbaugh. i do yeah. believe that they could they could lose a game like at denver that wouldn't shock me right like you wouldn't lose one of those but like four and two in division like that sets you up to to be able to win nine or ten games i think they could sneak into the playoffs even yeah, if there's I, a team that misses that's better than them, I think the Chargers sneak into the playoffs. Yeah, I yeah. think that's fair because I, I looked at the schedule and you see their strength of schedule and it is very easy. And then you really go through it. It is an easy schedule. You guys were not lying. You look at their schedule, 
I've marked 11 games that are below average teams. Vegas twice, Denver twice, Panthers, Steelers, Cardinals, Saints, Titans, Bucks, Patriots. Those are all winnable games. Yeah. If they still won against Kansas City, that's like 11 wins right there. And maybe they drop a couple of those. Fine. That's still 9-7. and 9-8, yeah, I, whatever. I feel, I feel pretty confident 9-8 and eight for this Chargers team. I do, too. I do, too. I really do. I think that, that new identity, that refresh on the offense, even though they don't have the big name, house name weapons, I still think it's going to be a breath of fresh air for this Chargers team. Yeah, all right. I love it. Let's move on. Let's talk about the best team in football, the Las Vegas Raiders. I'm kidding. They stink. They're over <laughs> under six and a half wins. Antonio Pierce is back. Their quarterback room is top to bottom the best in football. Gardner oh Minshew and Aiden O'Connell are at quarterback. The mustache duo. Look, they <laughs> Mario and Luigi I... type beat at quarterback. Yeah, I guess. Yeah. Ben, thoughts on the Raiders? Oh, <laughs> I, I all right. That, let's move on. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Broncos. No, I just really think like I like Antonio Pierce. The problem is I wish, like, like I kind of. Except, like, he feels like one of those guys where it's like, oh, that's a fun interim. Like, the, the Raiders were put in a bad position where they had to keep him. But, yeah. like, and although I like him, like, it's not, long term, it's not going to work. They should have signed Jeff Saturday. Right? <laughs> <laughs> like, <laughs> but it's, it's not going to work. I don't understand, right? Like, we keep talking about, I keep criticizing these, like, partial rebuilds. What is Devontae Adams doing there? He won't be there long. He will not no. be there the whole season. Well, what is he so, doing there? What are we doing? Even like Max Crosby, it's kind of like that's more understandable to keep him around. But like they go and sign Christian Wilkins. Him. You should be trading him. Yeah, like you should be trading Max Crosby home. Um, we don't have to mention where home is for him, but um, it might be in Michigan. Um, <laughs> but it's just I don't know. It's one of those things where it's like. They don't have a quarterback. They don't really have the future at quarterback. They don't have a running back. They don't have a running back. But then, but we've got a, like a top five receiver and like one of the best edge rushers and one of the best interior defensive linemen. It's like, well, like cool, but why? Why? Yeah. Like I, either be bad or work your way into being good and rebuild. Like, yeah. It, it, stop doing this. Like, like you're kind of like switching lanes, but you're kind of like. You're like, I don't know which lane I want to be in. So you're in between. You're straddling the line. No, pick a lane, stay in it. They haven't picked a lane. They're going to be punished for it. They, their Pats level bad. Mm. Or I don't know if I'll there. I don't know. The no, 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 so no. Bad, because, because Devontae Adams and Max Crosby and guys like that, that does save them. But like, At least there's but bright they're bad. spots. But yeah. they're really bad. They're a bottom five NFL team. I think this is very mm. simple. I think they were they were five and four last year under Antonio Pierce. Vibes were great. Vibes were high. Great vibes guy. New coach theory. All that stuff. That works in the interim. It's not going to work for a full season. I don't believe in that for a full season. Questions at quarterback. Minshew, Aiden O'Connell. Minshew's floor is higher, but you know neither of those guys really do it for me. Devontae Adams will not be on this team by the deadline. Get ready to learn New York Jets, buddy. Somehow he's going yeah. to team up with Aaron Rodgers. <laughs> <laughs> um, running back room, Carter. You touched on it. People are all hype about Zamir White. He was fine last year when he played, but as the bell cow back, are we sure about that? Alexander Madison was so bad in Minnesota, they were playing Ty Chandler from Carolina over him. So we're not sure about that either. O-line, meh. Defense, pass rush is the only bright spot on this team. Max Crosby, they go sign Christian Wilkins from Miami. That D-line is going to be great. The rest of the defense, don't love it. Overall, this team, ah, they're, gonna, they're not going to be the worst team in the division, but, man, I'm not excited about this team. I really don't. There's not a lot of games against bad teams. Can I have a dumb football brain question? That, see of if course. this makes sense. This might not land. We, we might have some edits in this episode. Doesn't every Raiders game feel like they're going to end with a weird non-football number where they're going to score 16 points or mm. 11 points or 23 points? I feel like they're never going to have a normal number. They're just going to be a safety or weird plays in there. I don't know. This they will, is a dumb football brain. They will lose to Denver. One of their games, they will play Denver, and they will lose 19-16. to 16. Yeah, or 1923. Yeah. It yeah. always starts yeah, with yeah. a one. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, it just always seems to start with a one. Gardner Minshew's changing that, Dylan. Uh, <sighs> that's such a dumb thing to say, but I, am I crazy to not be super high on this Antonio Pierce hiring or, or like staying around? No, I said it. Hiring. It's vibes. Yeah. We don't know how he's going to be as a full season as a head coach. Interim, great. Electric. Full I season think, as a head coach running a team. 
I'll uh, say my words wisely. I think I could be a good interim head coach. I think I could oh. be a raw, raw enough guy to get the boys going. Nobody believes in me. Yeah. I came from a podcast. Say. And you're like, <laughs> every, every interim head coach is a player's coach. Yeah. They're all like, yeah. hey, guys, yeah, I'm, you know, I'm, here for, I'm just here for you guys now, man. Screw like, ownership. Yeah, screw, screw the ownership, system. Yeah. Screw everything else. Like, let's just play how we want to play. Every interim head coach is awesome. Everyone's like, man, that guy's yeah. cool. I like Chris DeBoer. Chris DeBoer. What are we talking about here? I don't know. Steve I'm Wilkes. not as high on it. Rich Basaccia. Because the other thing, too, is the Raiders front office clearly did not want Antonio Pierce to be the head coach. They clearly wanted to go in another direction. And players like Max Crosby come to the front office and say, I'm holding out if Pierce isn't the head coach. And so, Yeah, then like, what do you do? I guess we got to do it. I guess we got to do it. So that, that doesn't excite me. Gardner Minshew, look, he's the best backup quarterback in football. Like If you're doing QB rankings, number 33. To make him the 33rd uh, ring behind, behind the Patriots. I was saying, you got to get all four Patriots guys just, in there. He's not yeah, a they count as one. <laughs> <laughs> Including the starter. If you yeah, take Tyler Greg Huntley. May's arm, Brissette's, Brissette's mindset, Joe Milton's throwing arm, I don't know. <laughs> you can build the perfect quarterback. <laughs> the Raiders are going to be bad. I, I don't have much faith in them. I, I see them going 5-12 and 12 this season. Was it last year Dylan was so in on the Raiders? It was last year, right? He, the win total hit, though. The win total hit, on it. and I think, don't fact check me on this, I think I called them beating the Chiefs on Christmas Day. We'll have to go back and check the tapes. That actually sounds we'll familiar. Check, I, I'm pretty we'll, sure you did. We'll I'm, have to I'm check the tapes sure there. The money line. I, I'm not as high on the Raiders this year uh, as I was last year. Do I think, uh, oh, you guys are killing me here. I don't think they're a bottom five team, but bottom six. I definitely <laughs> don't think they're good. Um, I don't. I don't hate Jacoby Myers. Obviously, we have the Devontae Adams talk. I think you guys are right. I think that he will not be with the Raiders. He'll get traded at the deadline, like you said, Connor. Better learn Jets, buddy. Uh, the tight end room <laughs> really. I mean, Brock Bowers obviously uh, just drafted. You don't really. You know what you're getting, but you don't really know what you're getting at the NFL level. But I don't hate the tight end room. I think the question I have is, what is Minshew's ceiling? Right? What is it just serviceable or is it good? And I think that's the question that really needs to be answered here. We're, the The pass rush is going to be there. Uh, not a bad pass blocking O line. Four guys returning. Uh, they play in a division where they have to play the Chiefs twice a year. That's obviously tough, and the schedule's not very easy either. So, I'm not not high on them by any means, but I wouldn't say bottom five either. Minshew ceiling. Minshew ceiling, Dylan? You mean like one of those little small jet planes you take on a 30-minute flight from Greensboro to Charlotte that you have to go to a 90-degree angle to walk onto? That's his ceiling. <laughs> like, I can't stand up straight in the Gardner Minshew room right now. Yeah. <laughs> like, you feel safe. Sure, it's safe. It's not it's a high floor. You're, you know, it's, it's, a, it's American. It's Delta. It's a respectable airline. But you're bending over to a 90-degree angle on that little two-seater plane. And also, it's like your layover, so you're excited. You're like, oh, I'm almost to my destination. I'm 30 minutes away, but, you know, like, <laughs> yeah. it's like, like yeah, not <laughs> yeah. bad. Anyhow, yeah, I, I agree with you there. How much stock do you guys put into the Raiders and Chargers being tourism games? Where it's a lot of road mm. fans being at the games. The Chargers, zero home advantage. Zero. Raiders have more of a home crowd than the Chargers, obviously. But yeah. the Chargers, zero. It's worth mentioning. I think it's definitely worth mentioning. I don't think it's nothing. There's no such thing as a home home game for the Chargers. That's fair, and, and that's true. like a yeah. That seems like a that's been talked about before. I feel like I think that's all the thing. time. But yeah. I know, but still, I, I think it's important when we talk about these win totals. And yeah, stuff. yeah, and especially uh, I, especially if the Raiders are bad early on in this season. Who you're telling me I, I get to go to Vegas and see my NFL team play? That sounds like a, one of the best trips ever. Yeah, it sounds fantastic. I do want to shout out my cousin Christian Wilkerson, wide receiver. Uh, he's second on the depth chart here. Shout out, shout out, Cuh. Come on, let's get let's get a dub here, Christian. Oh boy! What? Oh boy! It's my cousin. All right, we're all we're all down on the Raiders. Let's close up shop here with the Broncos. Uh, Broncos over under five and a half wins. They are plus what twenty twenty four hundred two thousand on some books to win this division. So, in other words, they're not winning it. Sean Payton, head coach. Maybe the best quarterback room top to bottom. <laughs> Zach Wilson, Jared Stidham, and Bo Nix. Um, I think Sean Payton uh, has a type at quarterback. Uh, undersized white guy. Yeah, I'd say so. I'd say so. Drew Brees. Um, I don't know. The, Charger, the Broncos don't do it for me. 
weird things happen last season. Uh, Troy Franklin, we're getting weird buzz that he's already a bust in training camp. I don't know how you can already say that, but I don't know, man. It's it's brutal in, in Bronco country right now, so I don't think I'm going to ride Connor. No. <laughs> yeah, I'm not I'm not riding here. We don't even know who the starter is going to be. I mean, I would it wouldn't shock me if all three of these guys started a couple games this year at some point. Maybe we start with Stidham. I bet Stidham starts the first few weeks, and then we'll go Bo Nix, and he'll suck for a couple of games, and then we'll go Zach Wilson, and then we'll go back to Bo Nix. Like, it's going to be a constant carousel here in Denver. Cortland Sutton's a great receiver. That's exciting. But behind him, Tim Patrick, Josh Reynolds, they don't really do it for me. I think this isn't even just me being a UNC homer. I think we will see a better Javante Williams season this year. He's another year removed from that horrific leg injury he suffered his rookie year. So, he should have a little bit more pep in his step on the ground game there. Samaj P. Ryan, always a serviceable backup. Defense, I'm not freaking out about either. I mean, win total's five and a half. There's a reason for that. I like the under here. I think this is hands down the worst team in the division. And maybe Bo Nix will be good. Maybe Sean Payton and Bo Nix will be a great duo in the future. Year one, I'm not a believer. And even when they drafted him, I was like, that was a reach. I thought yeah. that was a reach. I, th- yeah. I think they're tied for the worst team in the division. I think both Broncos and Raiders win five games this season. Yeah, I think that's pretty uh, That's pretty spot on. I'm I'm a little higher on the Broncos in that I think they're a little better than the Raiders. Is that because, because you I, have to be a little higher on the Broncos? Uh, no, I don't care. <laughs> um, I, I just Blink think twice. Bo Nix. You need to- <laughs> no, I think, I think Bo Nix. I think Bo Nix is someone that will come in and be – Competent and competent plus someone Sean Payton wants. Like that combo, I think matters. They've got, I think Josh Reynolds has kind of slept on a little bit as a depth receiver. He was wide receiver two for the Lions last and year. He's going to be wide good. receiver two or three for the Broncos. That's pretty good. That's it's not, not like Bo, it's not bad. It's not he's like fun. Bo Nix is, it's not like Bo Nix is stepping into a, like a great system and you just got to plug in Bo Nix and everything's set around him. Like he's going to be relied on no. to do a lot. And I don't, I don't believe in yeah. that this early. Yeah, no, I, I agree. I'm not saying they're going to be like, I just think they're going to be like a little above the really bad teams, yeah, like a game or two. Like they win like six, maybe they could win seven, but like more so than like five. I, I'm more yeah. like, like it's nothing dramatic. I just think you guys, I think, are more in, like, the Broncos are winning five games, and I'm more, like, six or seven. But it, I think it's more so I don't believe in any of these quarterbacks. I don't believe in Bo Nix. I think Bo Nix going so high in the first round is a big reach. I don't think he's that great of a quarterback in the system he's going to. he He's a quarterback that needed to go to an in-play system like a 49ers, Miami, Detroit, where you plug and play him. He's going to be successful I don't think there's a world he elevates this team in any way. We saw the disaster Russell Wilson was in last season. You think it's going to be much better for Bo Nix? I don't really think so in a rookie season if he plays worse receivers. You lose Jerry Judy. Offensive line, he's going to be running for his life. I really don't see it with the Broncos. I think 5-12 and 12 is spot on for them. Dylan? What? Offensive line. My notes said different. Uh, they were top five last year. They lost Cushenberry at center. They downgrade there. But Bowles at left tackle... Uh, like 84, 85 pass block rating. Was there something I was missing? Because I do miss a lot of things. I may be, I'm, I might be wrong, so go ahead. Th- that was like really the one thing that I was giving the situation credit to. It's like the offensive line's not going to be bad. Whoever they put in at quarterback is going to have time to throw. And we talked about the wide receivers. Josh Reynolds, you know, great number two guy. I- I'm not high on the Broncos. I-, I think they're the worst team in the division. I do think the Raiders are, are a little bit better. Uh, the, like I said, the only thing really going for them is that the offensive line is there and maybe come week six or seven, they throw Bo Nix in the mix and he has enough time to throw and he impresses. That's probably best case scenario for this Broncos team this year. Defense was bad last year and didn't really do a lot to address that. I think that's still going to be a problem moving forward. Uh, yeah, not, not high on the Broncos. This will be the ultimate Sean Payton, like. All right, is he is he really this good of a coach? If he yeah. handpicks Bo Nix and reaches on him in the draft, and it turns out to be successful in two years, hats off to Sean Payton because I don't see it. I think the Bo yeah, Nix pick was a reach. I really do. And I look, I'll eat my words if he's good for sure. But me too, Dylan. Real quick on the stats part of things, how much do you think the Broncos' defensive stats were inflated because of that giving seventy points up to the Dolphins? <laughs> <laughs> that I mean, that's fair. That'll contribute. <laughs> yeah, that, that, that'll do it a little bit. I think seriously, it's what one out of 
one out of 17, so... They improved second half of the year, though, to be fair. They got better as the year went on. Yeah, they did. They did. Also, how much in the second half of the year did defenses improve because so many quarterbacks get injured and we're seeing a lot more backup quarterbacks? Look at us adding context. This is that, awesome. That's a, that's a pretty good, love that's pretty good note right there, yeah. Also, you're losing MVP candidate Russell Wilson. That can't be great. That's yeah, true. That's true. Yeah, that's you know, we want to we want to crap on Russell Wilson. He didn't grade out that poorly last year. We are we already was, talked he, about that. But he wasn't as bad as people were crapping on him to be. You're right. Yeah, You're right. yeah. He was assist. He was a victim of of something something other than his own skill level. I think that's enough on the Broncos. <laughs> I think <laughs> I think that's probably five minutes too long. I think I think we, I think I think that was we were dragging out Raiders and Broncos content. There. <laughs> Anyhow, um, we want to make right. everyone feel included. Can't be like the college preview shows where we're like, eh, we're not going to touch on Louisville. Screw them. <laughs> <It's> like, uh, <laughs> division, uh, division winner, Chiefs all around. Yep, Chiefs. 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 I, I'm, I'm not. There, this isn't. This is not enough competition to like make a sexy pick. Like you just have to go with the Chiefs. Favorite Chiefs. win total. Ooh. Chargers is over. Raider- eight- Please, Dylan. Chargers over eight and a half. I also like them to make the playoffs plus 110. Mm, ben. Can you guys go first? Connor. Raiders under six and a half is my favorite win total. I don't see it. Minshew has a very clear ceiling. I don't think Devontae Adams is there the whole year. And the, other than the pass rush, this defense terrifies me. Back seven, yeah. not great. So Raiders under six and a half. I, I think it's Raiders or Chargers. I would go either one. I'll piggyback off the Raiders under because I just think, I don't think Antonio Pierce makes it through the full season. I think it's going to be a rough year. And, I never want – you as an NFL team, you love Gardner Minshew as your backup. You don't want him being your week one starter unless you have a rookie in the, you know, coming up like a Drake May. So. Yeah. All right, I'll go, I'll go Chargers over then. Okay. I was just waiting because if we were all doing it, I wanted to do something different. But if, um, if only one other did it, I'll do it. Yeah, that's perfect. Chargers yeah. are going to be sneaky and tough out this year. I really do think that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think so too. I think so too. But anyhow, let's uh, let's wrap up here. Make sure to follow us on all social media episode, all in the episode description below at CarterCast on everything. Like and subscribe on the YouTube. Go, ch- you're watching on YouTube. Hit that subscribe button right there, right there, right there. Or click on the other two episodes that are on your screen, like right there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. you see it right there where Dylan's Dylan's hand is, right there. Uh, go check out all that. If you're a college football fan, check out all the previews. We'll be here all NFL season long. NFC previews coming up very soon. Coming next week. I can't wait for that. Uh, we'll be back then, and we'll see y'all next time. Download SeatGeek. Use code CarterCast for twenty dollars off your first purchase. Bye bye.